you know, th- there's the old belief, tougher the childhood, tougher the route, eventually tougher the kid. Crown molding, granite countertops, BMW, soft kid. Eh, just being honest. Tougher the childhood, tougher the route, eventually tougher the kid. Um, so Noah Brown's a wide receiver, played with Dak for several years in Dallas. Now he's a member of uh, young Dak, emerging Dak. Now he's in Houston with rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud. So this is interesting, right? He played with young Dak. Now he's got young C.J. Stroud, and he compared the two. C.J. Stroud, yes, is more talented than Dak Prescott. Easily. He was a much better high school quarterback, a much better college quarterback, and NFL scouts and GMs rank him as a much better NFL prospect. He's better than Dak. But that's where quarterback is really interesting and unique in our American sports landscape. Is he as mature as Dak? Is he as tough as Dak? Does he have the leadership skills of Dak? Is he as resilient as Dak? Dak is very highly ranked on intangibles. And part of that, most of that, my guess, comes from Dak's journey. Dak got sacked 55 times at Mississippi State in his last two years. I watched a couple of those games. He got the hell beat out of him. He didn't have star receivers, star left tackles. He was on the eighth or ninth best team in the SEC, or at least best program. He made him better for the short term. All that toughness. Meanwhile, C.J. Stroud went to Ohio State. His left tackles were five-star. Go on to the NFL. Five-star wide receivers. Look at the last two classes he's been throwing to at Ohio State. Some of the best college receiving cores in the history of the sport. Great coaches, well-funded, in a much weaker conference where Ohio State, outside of their game against Michigan, has a significant talent gap. Easier route. Now, I'm not saying C.J. Stroud had an easy childhood. I don't know about it. But the two things that matter in this sport at quarterback, where do you land and what was the route like to get you there? Dak landed because he was a fourth-round pick to, at the time, the emerging best offensive line in the league, Tyron Smith left tackle, Zach Martin, and Zeke at running back with an offensive head coach who was a quarterback in the league. That's a darn good place to land. C.J. Stroud has a first-time offensive coordinator, a defensive head coach, and an offensive line 24th in the league last year. Ohio State has never had a great NFL quarterback, and I believe I know why. Because unlike the SEC, Ohio State usually has significantly better players than everybody on their schedule except the Wolverines and maybe an out-of-conference game or eventually a bowl game. And because of that, their quarterbacks get overdrafted, meaning they get drafted near the top of a draft of better franchises and eventually don't have the talent and unravel. I'm not saying C.J. Stroud will fail. I don't see a lot of the juice. I think he's fine. His comp is Jared Goff. I don't know if he throws the football that well, but he's not going to get Sean McVay as a head coach, and he may never get two offensive lines as good as the Rams his first three years and the Lions now. Goff's gotten great O-line protection for most of his career and offensive coaches both times. I do not believe... As talented as C.J. Stroud is, and he is more talented than Dak Prescott, high school, college, and now, right, coming out of college. I don't believe he's going to have a 98 passer rating, complete 66% of his throws, and go 61 and 36. Where you land and how hard was the route to get you where you land are the overwhelming keys in this league. I like C.J. Stroud, kind of. Dak today, less talent, more W's, better team this year, offensive coaches, McCarthy and Garrett. Good luck to C.J. Stroud. So I saw this story this morning. Um, Dalvin Cook's a really good player. He's a really, really good running back for the Minnesota Vikings. Nobody disputes that. Um, and nobody's interested. And you're like, what, 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 I, I, why? What, what, what could it be? Well, I'll tell you exactly what it is. Scarcity. Every industry, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be real estate. It could be my business. It could be law. It could be hospitals. 
Um, every industry has a position, often due to technology or cultural changes, that becomes much less important. And just think about the running back position. Last year, Houston, fourth round, picked up a running back named Damian Pierce in front of a bad old line, 1,000-plus yards, fourth round. The Super Bowl-winning Kansas City Chiefs picked up Isaiah Pacheco in the seventh round, 200-plus rush yards for Kansas City in the playoffs, almost 1,000. Oh, Tyler Algier, Atlanta picked him up, fifth round, kid in front of a pretty decent O-line, rushed for almost 1,200 yards. Fifth round, fourth round, seventh round. By the way, the Rams this year at the end of the sixth round got a running back at an Ole Miss named Zach Evans. Really good. Could start in this league, I think, eventually. Scarcity. I don't, I'm not happy that Dalvin Cook can't find a job, but college football provides running backs in every third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh round. So when you get into the NFL at that position, save your money, invest wisely. The only reason to spend big in a running back for a second contract is if you don't trust your quarterback, Ryan Tannehill and Daniel Jones. It should also be noted that as the game has changed, the smart general managers in the league also see this. Of the last 10 Super Bowl champions, a decade, eight did not have a thousand yard rusher. The culture has changed. The game has changed. Every industry has a job, a position that is being reduced or eliminated. And it just so happens in the NFL, they have value, but it's mostly running back. If you're wondering why Dalvin Cook doesn't have a gig, J Mac, we have got stories today. We do. Uh, your Dalvin Cook diatribe. Can I call it that? A diatribe? Sure. Um, Got me thinking, Kareem Hunt, still unemployed. Yep. Ezekiel Elliott, still unemployed. These are guys who are multi-tool weapons, whether they can block, receive out of the backfield, run the football. It, the running backs, you know, if you're a running back in college, what's the move? Do you stay at the position? Well, Do you try something else well, out? Do you- Christian McCaffrey got paid because the quarterback was Teddy Bridgewater. Derrick Henry's been paid. Uh, Daniel Jones will ensure that Saquon Barkley eventually gets paid. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you have a top eight to 10 running back, it makes no sense. And if you believe Kirk Cousins, and most do, is a top 10 to 12 quarterback, makes no sense when you're paying him to pay the running back. There's simply too much talent provided by the college game every year. And it's provided in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round. And by the way, Falcons, you showed that they, uh, Algier had a big year. They yeah. went and drafted a running back in the top 10. Is that what smart teams do? Well, so we we talked about that. Uh, It's not necessarily what smart teams do, but I thought there was an argument that the Texas running back was the cleanest prospect in the entire draft in terms of personality, character, talent, ability to do multiple things. I I thought he was, I I, I talked to GMs about this. They're like, literally, there's nothing to worry about. He was LaDainian Tomlinson. You get a good kid. He doesn't fumble. He can block. He can catch. And for Atlanta right now, they have a young quarterback in Desmond Ritter, and I think their theory is let's give him great skill people. They have a good old line. If he can't move us with this, we have the wrong quarterback. Like a lot of times, you like right now, C.J. Stroud comes into the league, and he could be good, but you don't know. Justin Fields, he's not, he's not getting any help. So you go into year three with Justin Fields, and you're like, we're still not sure if he can play. You will know by Thanksgiving if Desmond Ritter, Atlanta's quarterback, can play. They have an excellent young tight end, excellent receiver, star running back, a good two running back, and their O-line is sneaky top eight, top nine in the league. So it's like you'll know early. So Atlanta's betting on, we got to get the quarterback right. Let's figure it out now if we got the guy. I don't think it's a bad bet. I I, I think I, that was the one first-round pick I got right, Yeah, and I understood their reasoning for it. So the last thing, you mentioned the Chiefs and their seventh-round running back. Right. Um I wonder if people, how come people aren't talking about the Eagles running back situation? Remember who their top running back was all season? Right. Yeah. And what'd they do? They just said, <laughs> enjoy free agency. Thank you for your service. So we'll just bring in the okay. next guy. The minute the Eagles discover that Jalen Hurts is great, and he is, running backs can go. So Philadelphia figured it out. So did Kansas City. The minute you have a star running back, by the way, Cincinnati Joe Mixon may not be long for each other. 
Once you realize the quarterback's the star, then you start drafting running backs fifth round down every year. It's just the way to do it. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.